In today's tutorial, we're going to look at the compound and addition rules, and I'm going to prove all of them for you. Now, why do I do this with all of my year 13s? In fact, we uh, learned this last month in October. It's really important that I prove this to you because its applications become much easier. Know the foundations and then using them easy. Okay, so let's start off with sign of x plus y and cos of x plus y. Super easy to prove. We're going to start off with two right angled triangles. One right angled triangle with angle x, right angle, and then I'm going to do another right angled triangle on top. Angle y. Okay? <laughs> now, the triangle on top is still right angle, but its hypotenuse is 1. Okay? We don't know what the hypotenuse of this is. We're going to find it out. So, essentially, all we're going to do is we're going to find out all the lengths, because remember, we're looking at sine and cos of x plus y. This angle here is x plus y. This is x, this is y, this is the addition of both. So, if we think about sine and cos of this addition, we need to form another right angle triangle where this is the angle in question. Well, the way we do that is from the top here, we draw a vertical line down, and there's my right angle. So, sine of x plus y would be the opposite because the hypotenuse is 1, and the adjacent side would be cos of x plus y. Again, we'll see more of this later on. All right, like I said, let's just work out all the lengths. If this angle was y, what would this side be? Well, this is the opposite, right? And this is the hypotenuse. Okay, so we're using sine. So we're saying sine of y is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, which is just 1. Well, that just means that the opposite then, this length here, is just sine of y. So let's label that. By similar argument, we can work out the adjacent side. This adjacent side would be cos of y, because this is the edge over the height. So this is cos of y. Uh, just to allow for space here, I'm going to write cos of y. All right. OK, so this triangle here is fully labeled. Now, we're going to use this as our new hypotenuse to find these lengths, OK? I'm just going to redraw it over here so we don't mess things up too much. So we have cos of y. Now, this angle is x. This is the opposite. So we're going to do sine again. So I'm going to say sine of x is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse cos y. So the opposite is the multiplication of these two which is sine x cos y. So this length here is sine x cos y. Well, the adjacent side, yeah, what would change? This would now be cos of x. Cos of x is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, which is cos of y. Cos x cos y is the adjacent. Cos x cos y. Now, you guys should start to see where all of these terms are starting to come from. Now, remember what we said in the beginning. We want this length, and I want this length. Well, this length, I could potentially find by doing this big length here, which is cos x cos y, minus this length. Okay, that's where this minus is coming from. So, to find this length, I'm going to do the big length, cos x cos y, minus whatever this is. We need to find that. I'll show you in a second how we do that. This length here can be found by doing this length, which is about this much, plus whatever that is. We need to form a new triangle. How many right angled triangles have we drawn? We've drawn three. We need another one, Mike. Now, this length, I'm just going to copy and paste it up. I'm going to move up to here, and I'm going to draw a horizontal line. There is my right angled triangle. Because then, this length is the missing length here, when we were doing this plus this, and this is the missing length here. Okay, let's draw that over here and find out what those lengths are, and then we're done with sine and cos of x plus y. Not the minuses, 
will work now in a second. All right, so this triangle looks like this. So we have sine y now in the hypotenuse. But what's missing is an angle. We can find that very easily. This angle is x. Using our alternate angles, this angle here would be x. With this being 90, this would be 90 minus x. If this is 90 minus x, this angle here has to be x. Okay? Alrighty then. Let's find this one. That's the ops. All right, opposite hypotenuse. That is sine. Sine of x is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse sine y. That's what this length is, yeah? That is sine x sine y. Now instead of me writing it there, I'm gonna write it down here. Because that's where we wanted it to be, sine x sine y. All right? Hey, you can see the result. Talk about that in a sec, innit? This is the adjacent. So for that, we're gonna use cos. Cos of x is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, which is sine y. Multiply them together. That length is here, okay? Now, just so I don't mess up the diagram, I'm just gonna take this length and just write up here. Okay, so that's gonna be sine y cos x. Yeah, I've just multiplied these together. Nice. So, we're done with the basic ones. Now I'll show you guys how we prove the other ones as well. This is a workout, mate. So, sine of this angle, therefore, sine of x plus y is the opposite. Sine x cos y plus sine y cos x. So sine x cos y plus sine y cos x. Cool. Now the way I, my students remember this is very simple. Sine goes sine cos sine cos and sine keeps the sine the same. Easy peasy, squeeze the lemon. What about cos? Now cos, remember, is this length, sorry. We're gonna do this length minus this one. So it's cos x cos y minus sine x sine y. Proved. Now, my students <laughs> at MySpace, how do they describe this? They say the cos expansion goes couscous, soin, soin, yeah? Cos changes the sign, and that's that. Okay, so now we proved the basic formulas. How do we prove the negative versions? Well, how do we do that? What we do is we let y be minus y, okay? And how does the expansion change? Well, if we just look at sine, it would look like this. So you're basically saying, okay, y is implying positive, maybe 30. What happens if I made it minus 30? It's not a problem. We would still have sine of x plus, and this would now be negative y. How does the formula change? It becomes sine x cos of minus y plus sine of minus y cos x. Then we have to discuss cos of minus y. What does that even mean? Think about the cos graph for a second. This is your cos graph. Cos of a negative value here like minus y is the exact same as cos of y. This is known as an even function. Something that's symmetrical about the y-axis. So cos of minus y is the same as cos of y. And we'll be able to replace that here. Can you guess what the sine function would be? Maybe. Sine of negative y, that y value, is actually the negative of sine of y. This is known as an odd function because the sine graph is a 180 degree rotation of the positive side. So this is an odd function. So sine of minus y is the same as sine of y. Uh, minus sine of y, sorry, yeah? This value here, this is just the negative of that, which is what that's saying. Okay, cool, so that means here we can say sine of x minus y 
is the same as sine x cos y, because remember cos is an even function, so that doesn't change. And then sine of minus y is the same as minus sine of y. So this changes the sign. And there you go. So that means if this is minus, this would also be minus. And how does it work with cos? Well, with cos, if you make that minus, this is going to be minus. But cos of minus y is the same as cos of y, right? So this stays the same. But then sine of minus y brings out a negative. So this would become positive. So if this is negative, this would become positive. Remember, cos changes the sign, and that's that. OK, so we proved the sine and cos expansions. How do we prove the tan expansions? Well, this is very simple, because we all know what the expansion, well, we all know what tan is in terms of sine and cos, right? Mate, this is a workout, this board. Hopefully I don't break it anyway. Hopefully you guys don't mind the, uh, the random bits left, in it? Okay. Let's look at the positive version of tan. Tan of x plus y is the same as sine of x plus y over cos of x plus y. Now we can use our expansions. Remember, sine goes sine cos sine cos. Sine keeps the sine the same. So sine cos sine keeps the sine the same you just swap the angle around super easy to remember divided by actually what you should also do when you prove this let's leave a bit of a gap because of what i'm going to do next go predict the future in it so i'll leave a bit of a gap cos couscous cus cus cos changes the sign sine sine now from here, obviously we want, wouldn't want an expansion of tan to be in terms of sine and cos, right? We can very easily turn into tan by remembering, obviously, that tan is sine over cos. So here, this sine x, I can turn it into tan by dividing it by cos x. But as part of this expression, you can't just divide one term by cos x. You're going to have to divide everything by cos x. OK, and then looking at sine y, for example, if we want to turn that into tan, we have to divide by cos y as well. So actually, this is a very common technique to convert all of this stuff. You always just end up dividing by cos x, cos y. OK, so we are left with tan of x plus y is sine over cos, which is tan x, the cos y is cancelled plus sine over cos here, you can see that's tan y, and these cos x's cancel. Divided by, here, this all cancels, you're left with 1, minus here, sine over cos, tan x, and this is tan y. Okay, and that's proved. Now, how would it work with the negative? Well, remember, the numerator is sine, right? So the sine would stay the same. So that's why if this was minus, this would be minus. Then the denominator is cos, right? Which is why the sine changes. So if this is minus, this would be plus. And these are all of our addition rules proved. So remember, how do you remember sine? The expansion for sine goes sine cos sine cos. The cos expansions, cus cus, soin, soin. And then once you know those, you just know what the tan expansion looks like, and this is how you prove them. This here can be asked in your exam for the proofs. This is good for your knowledge. Um, and yeah, that is it. Stay tuned for the next video where I'm gonna do a really important, difficult question, uh, a proof question on the addition rules. If you like this video, make sure you're subscribed and like for more content like this. Nice.